So in this talk, I'm going to discuss the second derivative test for a function of two variables. So f is a function of two variables. x0, y0 is a point in the domain. So x equals x0, y equals y0. I'm assuming it's a critical point. Now what does that mean? Well, in this case, it just means both the first partials are zero and they are continuous. So the gradient vector will also be zero. I didn't write they're continuous because I'm actually assuming something stronger. I'm assuming the, the both or all four of the second order mixed partials exist and are continuous. Okay. So it's a twice different shape. It's absence. And you have this matrix. What's this matrix called? Hessian. The Hessian matrix of F at this point. And you notice that, that these two are equal. Why are these two equal? I should say, and are continuous around this point. Why are these two equal? By C law. Clairaut's theorem. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the or second order mixed partials are the same regardless of the order in which you take the thing. And so the derivative, oh, sorry, the determinant of the Hessian is what we'll actually be interested in. And that is this expression. It's the, de the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix is just this times this minus this times this in general. Mm -hmm. In that, in this case, it's this expression. fxx times fyy minus fxy times fyx, which are equal. Okay. By Clairaut's theorem, so this is what you get. Okay, so what do we now need to do? We now need to give conditions for the second derivative test. So we ought to give the cases of the second derivative test. So the first case is, I'll just write them down as, and I'll, I'll give a more detailed explanation. Okay. So d less than 0. The determinant is less than C. The Hessian determinant, it's called the Hessian determinant, is less than zero. Well, what is the Hessian determinant? We'll come back to this in a little while. But this one just says it's neither local mass nor local min. It's what we call a saddle point. I'll explain that later. Okay. D greater than 0 and F sub xx Okay. Suppose the Hessian determinant is greater than 0 and the second order partial with respect to x is greater than 0. What can you conclude? Well, let's just think about this information. The, Hesse, the second order partial with respect to x is greater than 0. So if you're just looking in the direction of x, okay, so you're just moving x and you keep y constant, what can you say along that direction? What kind of thing do you have? Increasing. Well, the second derivative oh, is concave up. Concave up. So what, does, what is the second derivative test for a function of one variable tell you? You have a a local minimum. Local minimum along the x direction. Mm -hmm. But but that's just telling you local minimum along the x direction. You don't know just from this piece of information what's happening in other directions. Right? Yeah. However, since d is greater than 0, you also know that, that f y y has to be positive. Why? Because d is this minus a square. Right? Yeah. So if d is positive, this thing is already greater than or equal to 0. So that means this product is positive. Yeah. Okay. If this product is positive and this one is positive, then that means that... Positive. This one also has to be positive, which means that even in the y direction, you have a, a local minimum. Okay. So... Why isn't it just enough to say f sub xx is positive and f sub y by is positive? Why am I bringing this d into the picture? Because we want to know about all directions. All directions. So this d actually being positive will not just guarantee sort of the d being positive and f sub xx being positive will not just guarantee f sub y by positive. It will actually guarantee that whatever direction you take. Let's make a picture here. 
whatever direction you take, you will get a so whatever direction you take on this black line, you will get a see so somewhere here the x direction is the y direction, but you could have a slanting direction like that or like that. And what we're saying is that this being greater than zero tells you that whatever direction you take, the second order partial in that direction will be greater than zero. Both of these are greater than zero. So you will have a local minimum from all sides. So if that is strict. Oh, by the way, everything's at this point x not y not. Suppose you have b greater than 0 and f sub x x x naught comma y naught is less than 0. Can you guess what will happen in that situation? Local maximum. Okay, can you explain it? Well, like roughly speaking, like we didn't give a full proof for the previous case either, but if you don't want to explain similarly, well, this being less than zero means along the x direction you have a local maximum just by the second derivative test for one variable. Mm -hmm. And because b is positive, this square is greater than or equal to zero, so this expression has to be positive. positive. And since this part's negative, this part is negative. Negative. So the the y direction also you have a local maximum, and the fact that b is actually positive will tell you that in every direction you will have the second or, second order pure partial is less than zero and so you'll have a local maximum in every direction and so you'll have a local maximum overall. Okay. What happens if d equal to zero? Oh, maybe I'll just say point is neither local max nor local max. Okay, now I can explain a bit more about less than zero and equal to zero. If d is less than zero, then what would happen is you could have some directions along which the second order partial is positive and some directions along which the second order partial is negative. In fact, you, you'll have to have such a situation. There'll mm -hmm. be one direction which is second order partial positive, there'll be some direction which is negative. And so it's maximum along some directions, it's minimum along other directions. And that kind of behavior gives you what's called a satellite. Now, what happens if d equal to zero? Well, let, let's make a subcase of this. So, so d equal to zero and one or both of of these numbers f sub xx and f sub yy is positive. Okay? Now if f sub xx is positive, can f sub yy be negative? No, because if one is positive, one is negative, the product is already negative, then you're subtracting something, you cannot get zero. Mm -hmm. Okay? So what we really mean is that either one of them is positive and the other is zero, or this one's positive and this one's zero, or both are positive. Okay? So you cannot have a situation where they have conflicting signs. Then this is inconclusive overall, but we can rule out one case. What can we rule out? We can rule out local maximum. Because we already know that from the from the whichever direction is positive, we already know that from that direction, the uh, the second order mixed partial being, sorry, the second order pure partial being positive, you have a strict local minimum along that direction, mm -hmm. which forces the function to have a strict local minimum along that direction, which means it cannot have a local maximum overall, mm -hmm. right? It may be a local minimum overall, or it may be neither, mm -hmm. but you can rule out local maximum. What's the next one? 3 equals 0. one or both of these is negative. And again, if either one is negative, the other one has to be either zero or negative. Okay. 
Okay. We can rule out local minimum. Why can we rule out local minimum? Because if, if one of them is negative, then from that direction, along that direction, it's already a local maximum, so it cannot be a local minimum over. Are we down here? Yeah. What's the last case we have? Well, the last case is sort of the entire Hessian matrix is zero. Well, this would force, this is sort of equivalent to HF is just a zero matrix. HF at x not y not. I didn't write x not y not here, but everything's at the point. All these evaluations are at the point. So actually, if D is zero and both of these are zero, then that also forces both of these to be zero, right? Because zero is zero minus the square, so that has to be zero. Now in that case, what can you say? It's completely in that case. None of the cases can be ruled out. Okay, so overall, the Hessian determinant sort of tells you whether you are conclusive or inconclusive in a broad sense. If it's less than zero, then you, you know for sure it's not a maximum. If it's greater than zero, then you can figure out if it's a maximum and it will be one of them. Okay. If it's uh, equal to zero, then you can rule out some possibilities sometimes. And if all the partials are zero, if all the second order partials are zero, then it's completely inconclusive. Okay. So this is the second error test for a function of two variables. Now, why did I do two variables before multiple variables? Because you, as you already see, this two variables thing doesn't easily tell you what it's like for multiple variables, mm -hmm. right? So that there really is something more tricky going on. In a subsequent video, I'll do multiple variables, but you already see that there's something tricky going on here. And to generalize to multiple variables, you need some advanced idea to sort of make this cleaner. Okay.